second little trick I'd like to show you today involves factoring. Uh, we do this in our college algebra courses and kids get to be pretty good at it, but the, the general question we get is why do I need to know this stuff? I mean, how is this actually useful to me? And I'd like to show you an example today of how that factoring, what it does, what it means, and then how it's useful in solving things that perhaps uh, maybe involve calculating area. Okay? Um, factoring, uh, Anything that has like a power of two, we call a quadratic, and, and above that, polynomials. It, it seems kind of academic. Uh, you've seen this kind of work before where you have to, okay, say 2x times x gives me the 2x squared. You have to arrange your middle terms, uh, the outer and inner kind of terms, so that the difference in this case, because this is a minus, you're looking for a difference, and the difference needs to be a positive x, one, really. And if I arrange things like this, I get 5x. This is 1x, and that's 6x, so the difference is 5x. If I switch them, though, the difference is x. That's good. That's what I was looking for. And I want it to be positive, so I just have to put the plus and the minus in the right place. Now, we do that kind of stuff in college algebra all the time. The question is why. And what I'd like to do is kind of show you that, okay, and go one step farther, factor the 2 out of there. Uh, but I'd like to talk a little bit about what that actually means. And by and to do that, I'd like to look at two formulas. Uh, the first, I'll have A, B, and C as kind of uh, parameters. The second, I'll have A. It'll be the same A, really. And then M and N as different parameters. So now to do this, I've got to jump out of uh, this business for just a second. And I'll pull up something else. Okay. Um, what you see here, this is a piece of software called Ge Geometric Sketchpad, Geometry Sketchpad. And it allows me to get some information in here. Here's the basic kind of ax squared plus bx plus c, but I'm able to change the values. For example, here with a, uh, I am able to kind of make a bigger. And I've got b and c set to zero, so this is just ax squared right now. And you see the effect of the a. It makes it uh, fatter or skinnier. It's kind of the idea. OK. And then. Um, the C out here, so the BX is still out of there, moves it up and down. That's kind of the effect. And then the B moves it around. In fact, that C becomes my uh, Y-intercept. And then this moves it around. The point is that sometimes this thing will cross the X-axis and sometimes it won't. What that x-axis tells us is, when is this thing equal to zero? Okay, So if I'm solving that equation, this would have two answers here and here, whatever those x-coordinates are, whereas this one may not, or does not actually have any real solutions. Okay, If I set that equal to zero, there is no answer for the x, at least not in the real numbers. Okay, Now let me flash out of this again real quick. Oops. Here we go. The a x minus m x minus n. Now in this case, um, the a I'm leaving alone. Actually, a does exactly the same thing. It makes it fat or skinny. It's the same a that we were dealing with. But here's what I want to show you. m and n. m is zero. n is uh, basically zero. Let me put it right back over there. There. It, the only solutions to this thing, the only place it crosses the x-axis are at zero. Watch what happens when I slide the m around. Okay, when m is, for example, 4. Set it right down on 4. There. I've got the solution here at n equals 0. I've got the solution here at m equals 4. The m and the n, and the same thing with the n. Let me do the n real quick to convince you. And if I put that on a negative 2, those are solutions. Those to the equation, uh, this thing equals zero. Those are the x-intercepts. And so that's what it's really telling you. Is it's telling you what are the answers to this equation. Um, the, the hard part, though, you can see that everything I'm dealing with here crossed the x-axis. Everything I dealt with in the first case, did not everything did cross the x-axis. So 
And let me just, uh, I'll flash back to my show now. Excuse me while I'm getting used to the machinery here. Um, some of the things in the form AX squared plus BX plus C don't cross X axis. Everything in the other form does. So the real trick is, can I get things in the first form into the second form? If so, I can find solutions. Something like this doesn't cross the x-axis. I cannot find that m and n. Something like this does. I may be able to find m and n, but they may not be rational numbers, and it's going to be hard for me to factor it if, if they're not. So factoring is good, but it's inadequate for a lot of the solving that we will we, we'll eventually need to do. But if it works, it's the easiest way to do it. And so let me show you a little example of where it would kind of pop up. And I have to kind of cook the numbers on this in order to make it nice so I can factor. But let's say you've got 100 feet of fencing and you want to enclose a rectangular area with that fencing. And I'm going to keep dub, uh, the width here actually less than the length. I'm just going to kind of impose that. Good question would be, okay, what's the minimum width I need in order to get an area of 600 square feet? Now, what you do, we have formulas actually for perimeter and area, and I'm going to fix the perimeter. It's, uh, it's two times the width uh, here and there, length and length. And then um, I'm going to set that equal to 100. That's the fencing I'm going to use. And the area is width times length. That is uh, up in the air. Okay. Now what you can do, you've got two equations with two unknowns. So you can actually solve for one of the, equa one of the unknowns in one of the equations. I'm going to solve for L in the first one and then you shoot that into the second one. And that does give you a constraint. If you're going to let W be less than L, then 25 is as high as it can go. Now, if you graph that over, over the range, 0 to 25, that's the curve you get. You get the left-hand part of a parabola. Can I get uh, 600 square feet with this? I sure can. Let me show you where the two, there's the horizontal line 600, and they cross. So to solve that, I could just use my calculator to get the intersection, or I could solve this equation. There's the standard kind of thing that uh, you're learning or talking about factoring right now in class. Okay, I need two factors of 600 that, when they add up, give me 50. Well, 20 and 30, right? And 20 would be the good answer. It's the small answer. It's the answer below 25. That is actually the x-coordinate, or the w-coordinate, excuse me, of where these two things cross. That's exactly where the factoring comes in. That's not an unrealistic example of uh, something you might want to pull off. We don't use it all the time because we'll just slap something together. But doing things in an optimal way, that's kind of the hard part. Okay, oh, and I should say this. Make sure you put your units in there. Um, and then we'll go to the summary page, kind of talking about some of the things we've, we've spoken about.